Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. What do you say? Let's take a look at what's trending this week right here on Takedown. Well, last September, he became the youngest world champ in U.S. history. And six months later, he'd capture an NCAA title. And now Kyle Snyder is an Olympic gold medalist. The Maryland native torched the 97 kilo bracket in Brazil. He beat Cuba's Javier Cortina 10-3 in the opening round and then blanked Albert Sardatov of Romania 7-0 to advance to the semis. Trailing 4-0 at the break, Snyder scored scored nine unanswered points to down Georgia's Elzabar Odikazi and moved into the finals to face eight-time World and Olympic medalist Kite Gutsiov. Snyder shot in early on a single leg and drove the Azerbaijani out of bounds to go up by one. While well, the two traded shot clock violations in the second, and Snyder sent the U.S. team home on a high note 2-1. Days before Snyder captured his first Olympic title, another Maryland native became the first U.S. gold medalist in women's freestyle history. Helen Marulis won four bounce on her way to the finals, scoring two tech falls, a come-from-behind decision, and a pin over past world champ Sophia Matson. But to win the gold, she had to do what very few thought was possible, dethrone the reigning 13-time world champ Sayori Ishida. Marutas fell victim to an early shot violation and Yoshida held a one-point advantage at the break. Marutas took the lead on a second period takedown and hit another with just 59 seconds left on the clock. The final score 4-1 in favor of America. I've been studying Yoshida for at least four years now. Um, and then when I met my coach Valentin Kalika, I really, we really started studying her for the past two. So I just knew I always wanted a gold medal, and now I knew that there was just going to be this person that was in the way of that. I knew that I would at some point have to fight this person in order to um, get a gold medal. So, but it's just such an honor to wrestle her as well. I mean, she's so accomplished. Um, the last time I wrestled her was in 2012, and I got pinned, you know, in the second period and. I just have a lot of respect for someone that is, you know, willing to take that risk and come back for a fourth and to step on the mat and to dedicate their life to this sport. And um, it just, I, I don't know, I've been envisioning it in my mind for so many years that it, it's just crazy that it became a reality. I, I think one of the biggest assets I have is that uh, I just have a really natural intuition. And, um, you know, my coach always tells me, well, the way we train is preparing for every scenario, but the way I compete, it's not, the game plan has already been worked on. I can't think about it, I can't focus on it, I can't even say, okay, I'm gonna look for this, this, this. I wrestle my best when I just don't think, when I wrestle freely, and so I didn't know, I didn't think, okay, am I gonna shoot on her, or should I be shooting on her, or will she try and attack me, or should I be more defensive? I just, it's the way I approach every match, I'm like, Okay, I know I want to control the center, and I just have to feel what's there, what's open, and then I kind of, while I'm wrestling, I'm figuring, I, I, I think it's like chess, I'm like trying to figure my opponent out, okay, why are they pushing on my arm, are they waiting for me to do something, are they baiting me, or, you know, just wrestling, um, thinking through things, so I didn't, but when she shot, I've actually, I mean, and I've been to camp, I went to camp in Japan, they finally, um, they opened a camp to us for two days in 2014, and they only let three Americans go, and I was one of them, and I just remember thinking, this is incredible, like, I'm finally going to get to train, you know, with this woman, because you really can't, they, they've they always had closed doors, it's really hard to get into camps or anything, and I just got my butt whooped for, like, three days straight, I didn't get a single takedown, I got taken down at will, and I just remember thinking, okay, this is, this is going to be tough, so, but I met Valentin, he totally prepared me, and when she shot in, I just, that defense actually isn't technically correct. Uh, they'll say, you know, you should sprawl first, or your first line of defense is to do this, 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 and the position I was in, I just, I was like, I finally need to trust myself. I just need to fight this. Like, I'm just gonna go for broke here. Like, if I give up too, okay, I can come back, but I just gotta keep fighting this. And then when they called it up, I just thought mentally, okay, I don't have to be afraid of her shots anymore. I mean, not, you know, I gotta be prepared for them, but I think I put so much hype you know, to her, and that just kind of, I think, helped me mentally just snap and say, okay, I think I can do this. Fans don't go anywhere. Our highlights will continue from Rio. You're watching Takedown thanks to Yellow Blue Ecotech. Stay tuned.
It's a slice of summer giveaway at Casey's General Stores. Visit Casey's for slice of summer savings like Pepsi and Mountain Dew 20-ounce bottles. Buy one and get one for only $1. And large made-from-scratch taco pizzas for only $13.99. Plus, pick up a slice of summer code on your receipt and enter online to win hundreds of prizes and thousands of pizza slices all summer long. It's all happening now at Casey's General Stores. Casey's, famous for pizza. At Cookies, sauces and seasonings are business, but food is our passion. Our secret ingredient is Cookies Flavor Enhancer and All-Purpose Seasoning. It makes pretty much everything taste better. You can use it on meats and in marinades, veggies and seafood. Try it on pasta and even popcorn. Pick up a bottle at your local grocer and enhance the flavor of your favorite foods. Cookies For more ideas and recipes, visit CookiesBBQ.com. Cookies. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. Well, from ninth in the country to ninth in the world, over the last six months, no one has seen their stock rise faster than the 21-year-old phenom Jaden Cox. With practically no international experience, the two-time NCAA champ reached the 86 kilo semis Saturday without surrendering a single point, not one point. He trailed two-time world medalist Liam Yassar thanks to a shot clock violation, and Jaden scored on a step out in the second, but dropped the match on criteria, the score 2-1. So it was on to the bronze medal round to face Cuba's third-ranked three-time world medalist, Renéra Salas. Leading 1-0 deep into the second, Cox was again put on the clock, and then he hit a double leg at the buzzer to go up three. Salas would opt to forfeit the remainder of the match, and the U.S. won its first freestyle medal of the games. She finished in third in 2012 and returned to the bronze medal round in Rio. Who was it? Elena Periskova. She started the day with clutch wins over 8th-ranked Tavi Usain of Bulgaria and top-ranked Mongol queen Batsizeg Sorensen Bolt. And the American fell just one point short in the semis, falling to Maria Manchuk of Belarus. Now, Periskova ran out to a three-point lead in the bronze medal bout but got caught in a cradle and pinned by Larianova of Kazakhstan to finish fifth at 63 kilos. Fellow U.S. veteran Travel Delognev opened his second games with a 6-5 buzzer beater against Azerbaijan and then edged out Poland's Robert Barron 3-2. Delognev would give up a quick snap down and four gut wrenches in the semis, losing to Kamil Gashemi and re-injuring his back in the process. In what was likely the final match of his career, Travel tried to overcome the pain but lost by tech fall to Georgia's Gino Petrisvili and finished in fifth. And then there's Frank Molinero who many were very surprised to see make the Olympic team to begin with, but he proved he's among the best in the world. Molinero opened his first Olympic appearance with a 2-2 criteria win over Poland's Gatsiev, but ran into a 2012 Olympic champ, Tagro Osgorov, in the quarterfinals and was controlled throughout, dropping the bout 10-0. Osgorov would advance to the finals, so Molinero was then pulled back into the repechage rounds to face defending world champ Frank Chamizo. Trailing 5-3 with just seconds to go. Molinero exploded through a single leg takedown. Just a second too late, though, and had to settle for fifth. All right, when we return, national coach Terry Steiner will join us live. That's right here after this short timeout. You're watching Takedown, brought to you in part by McBride. Matt, stay tuned.
It's a slice of summer giveaway at Casey's General Stores. Visit Casey's for slice of summer savings like Pepsi and Mountain Dew 20-ounce bottles. Buy one and get one for only $1. And large made-from-scratch taco pizzas for only $13.99. Plus, pick up a slice of summer code on your receipt and enter online to win hundreds of prizes and thousands of pizza slices all summer long. It's all happening now at Casey's General Stores. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all-time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green but cost-effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com. Well, our guest today in the first of a two-parter is the head coach of U.S. Women's National Team. Just arrived back from the Olympic Games in Rio. Terry Steiner joins the program. Coach, welcome home. How are you? Thank you. It's good to be back. It's a long trip. No matter how you look at it, you had your team to contend with. The press, the media, all that goes on, the pomp and circumstance. And you ran the gauntlet, I should say, of emotions. Can you talk to us about what a coach feels when an athlete who's expected to do well doesn't fare quite so well, and then an athlete who's just, you know, she, she, she just quietly did her thing and she ended up with an Olympic gold medal. Well, that's exactly what it is, Scott, is, is you, you feel the range of emotion. I mean, you, you know, you're elated for Helen and, and what she accomplished, not only winning a gold medal, but beating, you know, arguably the the best female wrestler ever to step on a mat and um to do that in, in Sayori Yoshida so <laughs> obviously for Helen we're elated we're very happy for her and you know it shows what just you know sticking to your guns and you know just being committed through hardship can do because if you if you remember uh four years ago um Helen Merlis was feeling the lowest of lows and four years later, now she's accomplished her lifelong dream. So for, obviously for Helen, we're, we're very excited and, and elated for her. And But on the other side of that, you have Adeline Gray, who went into the Olympic Games uh, uh, with the ex expectation to come out of there as, as a gold medalist. She went in as a odds-on favorite to win the gold medal, being a three-time world champion during this last quad. And so for her not to win and not to medal, uh, you know, is just, it's disheartening. It's heartbreaking. Uh, and it's nothing to do with uh, her preparation or, you know, things like that. I mean, Adeline's been the consummate professional and, uh, you know, had done all the right things, but sometimes it it's just doesn't happen. And, and um, you know, so so really that, that's what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for for Helen and, and I'm heartbroken for for Adeline and really you know how I relate to it is is you know just what my mom went through you know in so many years my brother and I wrestling and we never won at the same time and you know she she just got to the point where it was just uh, I can't do this anymore and she she was just always in turmoil she she always was torn and and I definitely feel that um this time around 
uh, coming home from the Olympic Games. And here I thought you and Troy never lost, so you've set the record straight here today. Yeah. <laughs> Coach Terry Steiner joins us. Coach, uh, specifically, let's talk about Adeline first. She's been so dominant offensively. How is Marzuliak able to keep her on her feet? And did it feel to you like she was getting frustrated from being in the tie? You know, I think it was really, I mean, credit to Marzia Luke. I mean, she definitely, you know, tied us up and, and, you know, we didn't get our offense gone. But really, I think it's it was more our approach. We just never committed to any, any you know, real attacks, real deep attacks. And, and um, you know, and it really, you know, Adeline's, her best position is on top, as we've all seen. And when that's your best position, you need to find a way to get yourself in that position. And, and you need to take some risks to do that. And, and we just uh, didn't do that. And then we found ourselves in a match that was one to one, and it was a very tight match, you know, with a minute, you know, a minute 15 left. And then you're just in, in that kind of a match, and you've got to find a way to get your hand raised. And and I thought we were doing a good job of just, you know, now shutting Marzia Luik down. And, and then uh, it came down to, you know, the last second where we were in a front headlock situation. and. And um, Marzi Luke went for broke, and, and she scored it in the last second. And, um, you know, I'm sure if you ask Adeline, I'm sure she would approach the match a lot different uh, in hindsight. But, um, you know, that's why we wrestle at the Olympic Games, and they don't just hand out the medals to the ranked, number one ranked people coming in. So, so uh, you know, hats off uh, to, you know, how she, I, I guess, held herself and, and carried herself after that loss. Uh, um, and, uh, you know, Adeline has has room left. If she wants to do this uh, in years to come, leading into 2020, um, she's going to have a chance to redeem herself. Helen Marulis obviously had her hand raised. The national media may not have been paying attention to this incredible story, but we were. Did she train specifically for Sayori Yoshida? Well, we, we knew that, you know, I mean, you know, and I have to credit uh, Valentin Kalika and, and, and Helen mostly. I mean, you know, but, but you know, we knew that if, if we're going to get the gold medal, you're going to have to go through Sayori Yoshida because I, I didn't think there was anyone else in that weight class that could uh, beat Sayori, Sayori but Helen. And, and so I knew whether it was we met her first round or in the finals, um, you know, we, we were going to have to go through that. So, you know, you, you have to, you have to, you know, harness her speed. I mean, Sayori is so quick and so patient and, you know, just waiting for people to open themselves up. And so, you know, I think that's really what, what Helen did a great job of. She was very patient in that match. Uh, she kept pressure on her that harnessed and tied up that speed a little bit, uh, but not overly aggressive because that's when people open open themselves up against her and uh, she just wrestled a perfect match and, and just stayed very, very patient. And, and that just comes from really believing in yourself and, and empowering yourself and, and allowing yourself to shine. And, and Helen definitely did that. All right, coach, I'm going to ask you to stick around for a minute. Our conversation with Terry Steiner will continue after the break. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Nike Wrestling. to show you three great ways to make your home more comfortable. Install a hybrid solar home system, utilizing solar power in the day, battery power at night. Install a solar attic fan to reduce heat and moisture from your attic. And install a multi-layer reflective insulation blanket in your attic to reduce the cost of heating and cooling. Conserve energy, save money, protect the environment with Yellow Blue Ecotech. Learn more ways at yellowbluetech.com. Speed the Sauce Man here. While sauces and seasons are our business, 
Food is our passion, and we've been helping make your favorite foods taste better for years. Try our wings and things hot sauce and everything from chicken wings to your morning eggs. Use it in recipes like spicy chicken noodle dinner, party dip, and buffalo chicken pizza. It's not only delicious, but it's award-winning too. Wings and things recently earned first place honors in the hot sauce category at the National Barbecue Association's Award of Excellence competition. Remember, smart cookies use cookies. Proudly made in the USA, Danmar offers incredible protection and customized gear. I'm Tony Ramos, NCAA champion and world team member. Take my word that Danmar Warrior headgear is the best. It's what I use. Look for my limited edition signature headgear at a retailer near you or online at danmarwarrior.com. I'm a world-class warrior and you can be one too with Danmar. Follow me on Twitter at T underscore Ram 133 or on my website, teamramos.co. All right, welcome back. Our conversation continues with U.S. National Coach Terry Steiner. Coach, let's get back to it. Let's talk about Elena Periskova and Haley Agello. Neither medaled, but Elena had some very nice wins, and Haley really showed the potential to be one of the best in the world. Well, let's first start with Elena. I mean, Elena has, has been a world champion. She's won five world medals at this weight class. Uh, we knew going in that Elena had just as much of a chance to win the Olympic gold as anyone else. Uh, coming into this weight class, you know, coming into this competition. And, um, you know, and people weren't talking about her, but that's really because last year she was at a different weight class and, and, um, and you know, she never fared well at the world championships. But, you know, she's been very successful at this weight class. So we knew going in that she had the ability to do this. And, you know, Elena, I mean, she it really two costly mistakes. One was in the semifinal. Um, she was uh, in in a match with Belarus, uh, an athlete called her last name is Mama Shook, and Mama Shook was, you know, ahead in the match by a point. But we were we were, uh, I think we snapped her down. We got into a scramble. We were coming around behind her, and we literally just never kept our feet moving. We kind of tripped over our own feet, and. Uh, and she took us down off of that. That one mistake is the difference between us scoring and winning that match and and, and it going the other direction. So, you know, we, well, that was in the semifinal. We very easily could have been in the final with Elena Perishkova. And then in the bronze medal match, uh, you know, I thought we were in, definitely in command of the match against Kazakhstan. We were ahead 3-0 going into the, the second period. We knew that really the only chance this girl had was to throw us and pin us. That's what she's what did the whole competition, and that's how she won a world medal last year. So we, we knew the girl was dangerous. We knew we needed to stay away from her ties and um, no deep ties and really just stay on her legs. And And we did a great job of that in the first period of the in the bronze medal match. In the second period, we came out, and, and we got caught in a deep tie, and she threw us and and, and pinned us and so you know just not staying in our positions but again you know it, it's so hard because Elena's put so much time in and, and you know has, has been so successful uh, for this program o over the years and, and really uh, for her to leave without an Olympic medal it's, it's heartbreaking you know because she's very very capable of that I mean she beat the number one ranked wrestler Soren Sambold from Mongolia uh, second round um she beat the girl from bulgaria first round who uh had give you know actually beat her earlier in the summer in poland and and that's actually who um elena beat for the world title in 2012 um so you know she she had a great tournament i thought she wrestled uh decent and and uh but just not quite enough you know those those mistakes cost us and and then Haley gallo I'll tell you what, she came out and battled, you know, first round. She had the girl from Netherlands, uh, who was third in the world last year, came out and dominated her, beat her 7-0 in the first match. Uh, then we're in a match, uh, second round in the quarterfinal against um, Tosaka, who is the eventual, the eventual Olympic champion. But we're in a match against Tosaka from Japan, and uh, we shut her down completely. Uh, we got put on a passivity clock in the first period, but we're, we're, we leave the first period down 1-0 uh, because of the passivity call. And then the second period, 
uh, Tosaka gets put on the clock, and during during that 30 second period, we took Tosaka down, so we're ahead two to one, and we really we just got over over anxious on top, and um, going for a turn and and slid off of her, and all of a sudden you know it turns into two points, four points, six points, and all of a sudden we're down in that match, but really. We were in the position that at a minute and 30 left in that match, uh, we're in a position where we're ahead two to one. And, um, you know, I think uh, Haley was wrestling a great tournament. So, so she, you know, she showed me a lot. I mean, you know, she showed me that, you know, she's come a long ways this summer and just her, her preparation and the process of how she was doing these things, uh, getting ready for competition. And then when she, when, the actually tournament started, she, she went out and competed very hard. So, you know, I, I think uh, it's just a matter of how she uses this experience, you know, and if she stays on course and keeps doing the right things, keep making the right decisions, uh, we're not going to, this isn't the last you're going to hear of Haley Gallo. She's going to be someone to contend with, with uh, this next squad. But, um, but uh, you know, so just you know a, a few mistakes, but that's that's the Olympic Games. You know you, you don't have to be perfect, but and the mistakes can be costly at times, and and um, that's what happened to us this week. Terry Steiner, we thank you. You've been very um, very available for us during this entire process, and it's just been enjoyable to be along for the ride. And I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Scott. All right, on behalf of all of us at Takedown, congratulations to Kyle Snyder, Helen Merlis, and Jaden Cox, and all the athletes and coaches who took part in the Summer Games. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the breaking wrestling news, and tune in on Saturday mornings to Takedown Radio. We might just have on some Olympians. I'm Scott Casper saying, free Team Mongolia. Keep your shirts on, America. We'll talk to you next week.